going on a push people we have another video in our war series this one is on the korean war from the 1950s let's get going so some background information before the war well in 1949 we have the fall of china in which mao zedong and the communists took control of china this is a huge blow to the truman administration because they are blamed for china becoming communist also, we have Korea was divided at the 38th parallel into two nations, North Korea and South Korea. North Korea was communist, South Korea was not. And this was divided up at the Potsdam Conference from 1945. The Soviet Union was in control of North. North, again, is communist, led by Kim Il-sung, and the South is non-communist, led by Sigmund Rhee. In 1948, we have Executive Order 9981 issued by this guy, Harry Truman, and this desegregated the military. So the Korean War was the first war the United States fought in with desegregated units. Also, we have the Cold War is in full effect. This really happened right beginning in 1945 after World War II. And the U.S. is following a policy of containment, which is keeping communism from spreading. So, of course, the U.S. is going to want to get involved in Korea to keep communism from spreading beyond North Korea. So let's talk about some fighting during the war. Well, in June of 1950, North Korea invaded South Korea. And this essentially started the Korean War. And at one point, they took over almost all of South Korea. So Truman sees this invasion as an as an act of aggression by the Soviet Union, so he calls on the United Nations to get involved. He also drastically increases the size of the U.S. military and spending. He invokes something called NSC-68, which quadruples the spending on the military by the United States. That is very important to know, NSC-68. Eventually, North Korea is pushed back beyond the 38th parallel, and China intervenes in the war on November 25th on behalf of North Korea, again, because China and North Korea are both communists, led that similar tie together. General MacArthur, very famous from this picture, the end of World War II, he accepted the surrender of Japan. He is in charge of the fighting in North Korea. He wants to fight a large-scale war and attack the Chinese. President Truman has much different plans. He wants to fight a limited war. So MacArthur starts talking smack about Truman, challenges him in the public, and Truman is angry and he fires MacArthur. And you can read the letter that he wrote MacArthur when he fired him. MacArthur comes back to the United States, a pretty big hero. A lot of people kind of agree with him during that time. Let's flash forward to the end of the war. In July of 1953, Eisenhower, who is now president, he agreed to a division of North Korea at the same 38th parallel that was exist that existed prior to the war, and also, and there was also a demilitarized zone. 36,940 Americans were killed in the war, and over 100,000 were wounded. And by the end of the war, almost all African Americans fought in integrated units. Again, that goes back to Harry Truman's. Ex Executive Order 9981. Let's talk about the impact of the war. Tensions increase drastically between the United States and China, and it will be decades before they start to get better. In fact, you see relations begin to improve on February 21st, 1972. That's when Nixon visits China. That's also my birthday. Not 1972, but February 21st. I was born 10 years later. This is a first in a series of long, drawn-out wars that the United States will get in get involved in. You have Vietnam shortly thereafter, and then you have wars today even that the United States are in that are very long, whereas before most of these wars were pretty short. Even World War One and World War Two were not in that long in length. Defense spending is going to increase drastically. That is arguably the most important thing you need to know about the Korean War is that defense spending drastically increases, and you see lots of new industries develop as well. And of course, presidential wartime powers increase, and an example of this during the Korean War is that Truman intervened in Korea without Congress's declaration of war. Remember, that's a power that is given strictly to Congress, the ability to declare war, and the U.S. gets involved without Congress declaring war. All right, that's everything you need to know about the Korean War. Thank you very much for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to leave them in the section below. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel and help me spread the word about this video. Thank you very much for watching, and have a good day, guys.